This is Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network, brought to you by the Iowa Soybean Association. Your daily recap of the information that affects Iowa's farmers, producers, and consumers, right here in the heart of the heartland. With reports from our award-winning broadcast team of Dustin Hoffman, Riley Smith, and Mark Magnuson. Now, from the IARN studios in Des Moines, here's Dustin Hoffman. Welcome to Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Dustin Huffman. Today is Thursday, August the 29th, 2024. We're so glad you could join us. Coming up in today's program, I'm going to talk with Eric Wilson of Wiffles and find out how their hybrids have been performing here in Iowa. But first, let's go ahead and run down those markets. It's time now for the Ag Matters PM Closing Market Summary, your source for market analysis and settlement prices from the day's trade in Chicago, courtesy of the folks at agmarket.net. Well, we're at the end of another trading day, and it's time to talk with Caden Sweeney of agmarket.net. And Caden, what did we see starting off in those grains? Yeah, stronger market again today, uh, you know, kind of bucking what we saw from pro farmer as far as numbers go last year. You know, market hasn't really seemed to to be too weighed down by those. We're going to have a really nice day today, corn up six or so and beans up close to 15. So, uh, you know, really strong day. It's maybe a bit of a surprise to people who feel like, you know, this crop's big and getting bigger. But at least for right now, the market uh, is, is content going the other way with it. Yeah, I was going to ask what was some of the uh, support that we saw there, you know, considering that we're waiting to find out if those numbers are going to be accurate. Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty easy uh, to maybe point at what the funds are, you know, obviously have been extremely short. You know, if they're looking to, to liquidate some of those positions or or even, uh, you know, just lighten up going into harvest, I think this could be that volume has been pretty heavy today altogether. So I think that's part of it. Um, you know, you, you certainly could see any number of things as far as people really maybe feel like the crop got too big in the market size. And I feel like it's a good time to be reowning some. Hard to say for sure. Not a lot of news, although export sales this morning were pretty strong and and have been here for the last couple of weeks, giving a bit of footing. But but all in all, I think uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna find out some things. Obviously, once combines get rolling, and then all bets are off. All right. So then, shifting over to the livestock side of things, looking at those cattle and hog numbers, have had some decent uh, numbers this week. Were they able to continue that today, or how did that pan out? Yeah, livestock market a bit a bit lower today. Fats down seventy cents or so, and feeders down about uh, almost two dollars now. But uh, just kind of like the corn and bean markets are both facing resistance at the twenty day moving average. That's kind of what uh, at least feeder cattle have going on as well. The October feeder cattle contract twenty day moving average is right around two forty, and and that twenty day has been really important for. Um, I think the funds seem to watch it pretty close. The market as a whole watches that pretty close. It's been pretty firm resistance really here for the last few months. So I think that's coming to infect certainly on the cattle market, uh, taking some back um, that they put on this week. And, and again, that 240 October on feeders is going to be pretty important in my opinion. You know, it's kind of interesting, the, the extreme volatility we've seen in the last couple of years, it's kind of good to remember that sometimes these markets are just going to ebb and flow a little bit here and there, and it's not going to be the end, uh, end of the world or, you know, the bounty of the county one way or the other. It's just the way the market ro rolls out. Yeah, it is. And, and it makes it a little bit difficult, you know, somebody in our position where, you know, people call say, hey, why is the market up today? And sometimes it's just, you know, because it is, you know, this thing's trading five days a week. There's there's going to be moves that matter and moves that don't. That's kind of, you know, our job, quote unquote, is to figure out what matters and what doesn't. And, and right now, I think it's just you know, on the grain side, we're trying to figure out what yield is and, and everybody's got a different opinion there. And that's what the market's trying to flesh out. And and on the livestock side, you know, kind of the same deal. I think the technicals have been pretty important here as the funds continue to be pretty heavily involved. And, um, you know, obviously, our markets have, have had a strong week. They're going to face some resistance here too soon on those moving averages. So just kind of a, in my opinion, it's certainly a good day. We'll take it. But but I don't think there's a ton of weight in it necessarily yet. All right. Well, we'll definitely try not to leave a gift horse in the mouth. But, Caden, if folks want to talk to you guys about some of the market strategies they want to think about or, you know, getting their marketing plans in place, you know, already starting uh, not too early to start thinking about that 25 season already, where do they get in touch? Yeah, certainly a good idea to take a look at 2025. Just go to, to agmarket.net. You can get logged on to a free trial of everything. Get on the app and the Intel and, and all the good stuff to start looking at profit margins, not only for 24, but 25 and beyond as well. A uh, really good place to start. All right. Well, Caden, we thank you so much for the insight. We'll talk to you again real soon. Yeah, I appreciate it, Dustin. Thanks a lot. That again was Caden Sweeney of agmarket.net. We're going to take a quick look at those closing numbers now on the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network market screen. 
At the close, September corn was up six and a half at three seventy one and three quarters. Soybeans up fifteen and a quarter at nine seventy three and three quarters. Soybean meal down two dollars and twenty cents at three oh eight sixty. Soybean oil up a buck thirty seven at forty three seventeen. Chicago wheat up ten and three quarters at five twenty five even. Kansas wheat up three quarters of a cent at five forty five and a half. Minneapolis spring wheat up seven and three quarters at five sixty two and a quarter. And oats up eight and three quarters at three forty nine even. Live cattle were down 72 cents at 177.90. Feeders off a buck 80. They're at 239.50. Lean hogs up 50 cents at 82.17. Pork cutouts up a dime at 91.17. And class three milk three cents higher at 22.20. And that's been our closing market recap. We're going to take a short break and hear from our sponsor, the Iowa Soybean Association. And when we come back, we'll talk with Eric Wilson of Wiffles. This is Ag Matters PM. Iowa Soybean Association is driven to deliver for Iowa's 40,000 soybean farmers. We're proud to provide objective agronomic research, a helping hand with soil and water stewardship, and timely industry news powered by the Soybean Checkoff. Learn more at IASoybeans.com. Welcome back to AMPM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Dustin Huffman. Had the chance to talk with a lot of ag companies while we were out at the Farm Progress Show here in Boone the last couple of days. And of course, seed and their performance has been a hot topic, especially in the ag economy we're seeing right now. Eric Wilson of Wiffles gives us a quick preview of what's been happening in Iowa. The new facility in Ames, really excited about seeing that. I know you're going to be showing that off here during the Farm Progress Show as well. But one of the things I think we need to really get back to here while we're talking is what you guys have seen in the fields around Iowa this year as far as performance from Wiffles. And let's talk about that, first of all, what you've seen. Yeah, so things are looking really good out there. You go out and you pull any any random ear, Dustin, and the kernel counts and the hybrids look incredible. But there is plenty of issues out there as well. Uh, and we can talk about those in any order you, you would like. Well, let's go ahead and just, let's just start at the top and work our way down. What kind of things are we seeing that are challenging hybrids across the board? So if we go back to spring planting conditions, I think this was one of the widest planting windows uh, that I can remember. Mm -hmm. um, I think 75 days is, is where I had the planting window pegged from, uh, depending on where you're at in, in Iowa, especially. But uh, we had a lot of water. Mm -hmm. We probably had uh, above average nitrogen loss this year, and we did start seeing disease in some places earlier than we expected to see that. So uh, those two issues or those three things are kind of coming to full culmination as we get now uh, close to the harvest season. Right. Um, so there's definitely things to talk about out there. Uh, Our, so talking first with that mother nature situation, no matter how good the hybrids are, no matter how good technology is, mother nature's still in charge and she it, proves it exactly. day in and day out. But obviously it's the things that come after the disease and pressure. Yep. Every situation is different. When we've come off of four years of major drought, didn't expect to make up all that water table in one month, but we did. Yep. And so now we're looking at diseases we haven't had to deal with for a while and how do the traits stack up and being prepared for that when we kind of planned for a drought that was going to take a time to relieve and all of a sudden now we're into an excess of water. How do they stack up? Yeah, so we're getting good looks as far as like hybrid characteristics on things that we haven't got necessarily great opportunities in the last couple of years. Like you said, we spent two years for the most part, getting into a drought in a lot of the state, and it took us about two weeks to get out of it this last spring. So things can change quick. Um, we're getting good looks at disease tolerance across our hybrids this year. Uh, there's even, yeah, I know we don't cover it, but if you go up into southern Minnesota, they're dealing with some southern rust right now. Mm -hmm. that, uh, it's like southern rust got lost, uh, jumped over the majority of Iowa, and kind of landed in, in Minnesota. So not something that those guys have typically had to deal with up there more usually we see that in especially the southern part of the state or northern missouri uh, a lot of tar spot did find tar spot early this year mm -hmm. some things that i would add on top of that i think with the weather that we had this spring and as wet as it was farmers were very in tune mm -hmm. with what to expect for disease pressure and i actually feel like farmers made more fungicide applications this year than they did the last year despite the price of corn. Right. Uh, usually those kind of go hand in hand, but I do feel like more fungicide applications got made, and I also feel like they got made very timely this year, and I think that's important. Um, things that have been sprayed with a single application, holding up pretty darn well for the most part. I'm, I'm actually very impressed at 
how well some of that has held disease off. That again was Eric Wilson of Wiffles. You can find the whole conversation by clicking the little card right now that you're seeing or by looking at the description of this video. And that brings us to the end of today's show. You can find all our content online at iowaagnet.com. Follow us on Facebook, X, and on our YouTube channel. If you're here, subscribe, hit that bell icon so you're notified each time we put out a new video project. Also, don't forget about the free market analysis three times a day, openings, middays, and closings coming right to your mobile device through the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network podcast and also online at iowaagnet.com. From the IARN studios in Des Moines, I'm Dustin Huffman. For Andy Peters and Mark Magnuson and Riley Smith, we thank you for watching. This has been Ag Matters PM.